thanks a lot for, uh, for having me out here. I really, it's, it's great to be in Princeton. Um, and it, I, I'm happy to talk to you about uh, exactly what Francesco said. Uh, and I want to say this is joint work with, uh, with uh, Tom Mark, uh, Kyung Bay Park, and Min Hyun Kim. Okay, so uh, we saw in Yi's talk earlier this, this notion of surgery, um, and that's really, uh, th this talk is going to be about um, sort of topological applications of Hagar fleur homology and, uh, and gauge theory. <coughs> or, and so, so, so we have this definition of day in surgery, so if I have P over Q surgery on a knot in the three sphere, this is, you know, remove a neighborhood of the knot and glue in a solid torus. It's placed by a homeomorphism from the boundary of the solid torus. Can you guys, can you guys read through this? No. Oh, Josh is shaking his head, but you know, I should always know that he's messing with me. Um, <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> that, you know, that sends the uh, homology class of the boundary of the disk to P times the meridian of the knot plus Q times uh, the longitude. Okay, and so we have this uh, classical theorem of Licorice and Wallace. Licorice from 62 and Wallace. Independently from 60, that any three manifold, so closed oriented three manifold, um, I always sort of probably omit closed or oriented when, uh, when it's, everything's oriented, um, can be obtained by surgery on a link. A link in a three speed. Okay, and, and this is a great theorem, but it sort of raises numerous questions just on, on the face of it. So, you know, so how complicated, say, does the link have to be with respect to the three manifold you're hoping to get? And it's sort of the nature of many such questions. And, and the one that I'm going to focus on here today is <clears throat> given a three manifold, what is the minimum? number of components of a link in the three sphere um, giving rise to it via surgery. So some people maybe call this the Dane surgery number. Um, I've seen it called different things. Yeah, I haven't been working out enough, I guess, but I know that this, this thing, I just want to use it once and see how, how difficult it is. Oh, it's not, it just really works well. Okay, okay so, <clears throat> so let's just make a couple uh, preliminary ob observations. So, <clears throat> so, so the first is that, um, you know, you could, you could approach this from the perspective of, uh, you know, what you know after maybe reading the first couple of chapters of Hatcher. Um, and so, so, so one thing that you, you could do as an exercise um, is that you could show that the first homology of P over Q surgery on a knot in the three sphere can be easily computed. It doesn't really depend on the knot, it just depends on the, uh, the surgery uh, coefficient. So it's ZP, um, independent of K. So, so this already gives you some obstruction. It says that you know, if you have a manifold whose first homology isn't cyclic, then you know that it's, it's not surgery and not in the three sphere. Um, and you know, one way you might compute the first homology, you could say, well, I compute the homology of the knot complement, and then I use my chorus in conjunction with my description of this manifold as glued from two pieces. Um, and you know, you'd want to compute the first homology of the complement of the knot, and that's, that's, uh, that's always Z. Um, 
And in one way you could would compute that is by analyzing a sort of more subtle invariant, which is the fundamental group. So um, another observation is that if you look at pi 1 of P over Q surgery, what you can show is that, is that this group So I'm going to use some notation. So this, this group is, is what I'll say is normally generated by, a, by a, the meridian, or in any meridian of the knot. So, so if I have my knot, I can mark its meridians. And another relatively simple exercise um, and that is you could show that there's a presentation of the fundamental group of a knot complement that's generated by meridians to each of the, um, uh, the connected arcs in a diagram of the knot, so these three meridians here, meridian one, meridian two, meridian three, and it has a single relation for each crossing, of the, which is just, uh, you know, conjugate one by, by the other. Um, and, so, and so what this means is I look at all, I can look at this, the, the, the subgroup of one of this three manifold, which is generated by all conjugates of any given meridian. And since all, you know, all the meridians are conjugate. And so, so this, this presentation that I just alluded to is the Verdinger presentation. And what it says is that the, fun, the fundamental group of a knot complement in the three sphere is, is normally generated by, by a single element, any one of these meridians. And so I'll just define the weight, the weight of a group. minimum number of elements <clears throat> needed to normally generate it. So generated by all of their conjugates within the group. And so this is saying that, you know, this Verdinger presentation implies that the fundamental group of the complement of the knot has weight one and the uh, surgery is just a quotient of that weight one group, so it adds, um, it's not, you know, it's, it, it preserves the weight one. So. so the weight of pi one. So, so you immediately think that, well, you know, maybe, you know, for instance, so there are these well-known three manifolds out there, homology spheres, where, um, where they have zero first homology, zero second homology, and they, they look homologically just like the three sphere, um, you can produce them by doing, say, one over Q surgery on a knot in the three sphere. Um, and then the first homology observation produces nothing, but you maybe say, well, I'm just going to produce some interesting examples of homology spheres that aren't surgery on a knot, but pass the homology test by, you know, coming up with ones that have high weight fundamental group. Um, and there's this kind of amazing question. Uh, uh, so, so to indicate that that might not be the best idea, there's this question of Weigel asked in the group theoretic context uh, sometime in the 70s, uh, if not earlier. And <clears throat> the question is, is every finitely generated uh, perfect group, so perfect group just means that G mod is commutator, or its abelianization is, is trivial. And so that's, you know, the first homology, if you remember, is the abelianization of pi 1. Um, <clears throat> so is every finitely generated perfect group weight 1? So, I, yeah, I, I just can't, you know, it's sort of hard to believe that this is open, that nobody knows the answer to this. Um, but, but it indicates that, you know, well, if you can use the, the weight to obstruct a homology sphere from being surgery or not, then you sort of, you, you've done pretty well. Um, on numerous fronts. Um, okay. So I want to now think a little bit more subtly about uh, what uh, maybe uh, t topological considerations will will uh, uh, will give to this question. So um, so somewhat more subtle than fundamental group or or H one is the uh, existence of uh, essential spheres.
So, um, <clears throat> so let's just, there's this, uh, so the kind of expectation is that if you have some essential spheres in your, in your three manifold that you're not going to be surgery on a knot, and that's motivated, I guess, by the conjecture of um, a famous open problem called the cabling conjecture. This is by uh, Gonzalez Acuna uh, and, and, and Short from 86. And it says that if I do surgery on a knot, and I obtain a three manifold, which is the connected sum of two three manifolds. These are two three manifolds. I remove a three ball from them. I glue them along their common two sphere boundaries. Um, uh, then, oh, let me so p over q. Let's write lambda for just some framing or some well uh, some some surgery. Uh, then. Uh, then the, the conjecture says that K must be a cable knot, a PQ cable knot, and uh, lambda must be P times Q over one. So, so a cable knot is you know if I have a if I have a knot. I can look at its tubular neighborhood. That's a solid torus, and its boundary is a torus. And then I can just, on that boundary torus, I can, uh, I can embed a slope PQ curve, uh, or in other words, a PQ torus knot on, that, on the boundary of that tubular neighborhood, and that's a cable knot. OK, so, so should this conjecture be true, it indicates that you know, having a, having a two-sphere and your three manifold that separates it into two other three manifolds is going to serve as an obstruction to being surgery. Um, and some results towards this uh, conjecture. So here's this great theorem of goodbye uh, from 87. So if, so if you have a three manifold which is zero surgery on a knot, Uh, so K non-trivial, then M is irreducible. And that irreducible means every two-sphere embedded in, in bounds of di bounds of In a, in a stronger version that applies outside of, uh, outside of the realm of homology S1 cross S2s, uh, it's due to uh, Gordon Lukey. Eighty-nine says if so, if I have surgery as a connected sum. Then one of the summands is a Lin space. But so Lin spaces, uh, non trivial Lin spaces have, have non trivial uh, first homology. So this is saying that if you put yourself in the uh, <clears throat> so corollary is if um, M is an integral homology three sphere or an integral homology S1 cross S2, <coughs> um, and M is surgery on a knot, the three sphere, then M is irreducible. So irreducible means it has no uh, essential two spheres. Okay, yeah, so. Okay, uh, so you know, so that sort of ups the ante. So you say, okay, well now I'm going to sort of say, well, what about manifolds that are irreducible and and ha and pass all the other uh, obstructions? So I want to look for a manifold that has uh, the homology of the three sphere. Um, the the so 
integral homology in the three sphere. I want it to be uh, weight one. Uh, I want it to be irreducible um, and not be surgery on a knot. <laughs> and so, so this is the, the first place where uh, uh, maybe symplectic uh, topology or, or, or gauge theory enters the picture. Um, and this was from work of Oakley. It's the first person to make progress on this from 97. Uh, Taubes' uh, in-periodic uh, version of Donald's diagram theorem for, uh, for, for the intersection forms of four manifolds to show that uh, there exists um, irreducible and in fact uh, well they're irreducible because they're hyperbolic uh, three manifolds um, with homology isomorphic to the homology of the three spheres, so they're integral homology spheres, but aren't surgery and a knot. So he wasn't able to produce such examples that had. Uh, it's not clear that he could produce examples that have a weight one fundamental group. Um, in fact, we had to wait a few years later. So this is um, more recent work of Hom, Karakert, and Lidman. And oddly, uh, I sort of know the dates more on the things that happened before I was mathematically alive uh, than I do about. So I don't know when. Maybe fourteen. Is that? I, I saw Jen around, but maybe she'd probably know when they proved this better than I. But I think this is more or less correct. Um, so, so, they, so they used Hagard floor homology um, to produce um, examples um, of M3, which are with weight one fundamental group um, giant surgery on a knot Um, I'm missing some other facets of this. Uh, the examples in are, in are irreducible. And have uh, an integral homology spheres. Uh, irreducibility follows because their examples are ciphered fiber spaces. And again, if you have any kind of geometric structure, that's going to preclude the existence of, of uh, uh, reducing spheres. Okay. Right, so the sort of <clears throat> a natural question left open by all this, which was motivation for, for, for what I'm talking about, is, was asked by uh, Ashenbrenner. Uh, Friedel. And Wilton and their tome on uh, three manifold groups. And the question then is, wh well, what about the, uh, the homology S1 cross S2 case? Um, so so and the question is, um, if F3 has uh, weight one is irreducible, and has H1 isomorphic to Z, uh, does this imply that Y is uh, surgery on a knot? Okay, so, and, and this is, this is the, the answer to this question is what I want to talk about, and um, well, the short answer is no. 
Uh, but let me give you a little bit more precise. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop using that now that I've... Leave it to... Is there any questions while I erase? So more precisely, uh, and this is with uh, Mark Park. And so there exists an infinite family of three manifolds. Such that uh, they are uh, had the first homology Z uh, they're irreducible uh, weight have weight one fundamental group None of them uh, are surge in a knot. It, well, none of us are surge in a knot. Okay, so, but in fact, we actually, the, the technique, uh, it, it proves a bit more. So in order to state it, let me just make a definition. Okay, so so if I have two n manifolds, um, we'll say they are homology cobordant. If there exists a n plus one manifold whose boundary, so these are oriented manifolds. So the oriented boundary of this manifold is negative whatever orientation x came with, x one came with, uh, disjoint union x two. And uh, the so there's an inclusion map. Or inclusion maps uh, of the two boundary components into the for, into the n manifold, and if both of those inclusion maps are isomorphisms, so this thing homologically looks just like a cylinder over over x xi. Okay, and so this kind of a you know maybe you ask a question about, about whether or not manifolds are obtained up to homeomorphism as surgery or not, but you, know, you relax it and say, what well, to this weaker notion of equivalence of, of, of manifolds being not homeomorphic, but homology cobordant, could I, could I have a positive answer? And in fact, uh, MI is not homology cobordant. To search on a knot. You know, on any knot. And, and moreover, uh, so they're also, well, these are different manifolds in every sense of the word that I could, you know, well, not every sense of the word, I mean. Yeah. But anyway, they're both, they're all manifolds. They're all, but, so, but, you know, but in, in a sense here, so, so MI is not homology cobordant so hence not homeomorphic to mj if i is not equal to j nor to any ciphered manifold
And so I just want to, I, I, I bring up the ciphered fiber manifold case in particular, this is um, in, a, in a homology sphere uh, setting. There's some nice work of uh, Matt Stroff again. Um, some of the uh, information that comes out of the, the pin 2 equivariant uh, monopole fluor homology. Um, uh, and, and this was, you know, had a, so Floyshev had proved this uh, in an unpublished work some, some time ago. I don't know, one of those two. So, uh, and they, they showed that, uh, case, it, it was actually a fair amount of work to show that, uh, say, the connected sum of two cipher fibered spaces, sigma 2, 3, 11 with itself, um, isn't homology cabordant to a ciphered fibered space. Um, so somehow we're, we're getting that type of result in the homology S1 cross S2 case. Um, but we're getting something more. Is I don't, I, in the homology sphere case, it, it's an it's a open problem as far as I know, whether or not there exist manifolds which aren't integer homology spheres which aren't integrally homology coordinate to surgery or not. Um, so it's sort of interesting to me that this technique gives you something harder than what you can prove in the homology sphere case. Okay, so, uh, so the remaining however many minutes, I'd like to just uh, sketch a proof of this. Okay, so, the, so it'll go by way of constructing some manifolds. Um, The manifolds we're going to construct are not surgery and not, but they are, as, as you'll see in just you know, half a second, they are uh, surgery on a two complete link. So I have this two component link. Their components are, the components are, are, well this is just the trefoil knot in some presentation of it, the right handed trefoil knot. Uh, and then uh, this, well it doesn't look like a knot because this dot dot dots means that I have a total of four I uh, minus one crossings in this region here. Um, but they're all, they're all the same types of crossings as you have over here. And now I do plus one surgery on both components. Okay, so my, this is my manifold MI defined by, by doing surgery in this way on this two component link. Okay, so, uh, so to, to verify these properties, so they, the, the, I guess verification is increasing difficulty. Um, and, and the first one uh, we, can easily, uh, we can easily understand. So H1 of this, uh, this manifold, or in general surgery on any link, um, it's, it can be represented as the co-kernel of a, you know, a <clears throat> map from Z to the number of link components to Z to the number of link components obtained by looking at the linking matrix of, of this link. In this case, the linking matrix is 1, 1, 1, 0. So these ones are the surgery coefficients and these are the linking of the two components. And then the first homology is the co-kernel of this map, which is easily seen to be Z. Okay, so for the irreducibility and the weight one fundamental group, so this is uh, also relatively straightforward. So, but they, they kind of go hand in hand. And um, they're both kind of a, a consequence of. The JSG decomposition of these of these uh, manifolds, or these manifolds aren't geometric manifolds; they're not ciphered, fibered, or hyperbolic, uh, but they're but pretty nearly so. And so they can be obtained by from, from 
manifolds by, uh, by piecing them together. And so let me just make a definition. So given x1, x2, uh, these are three manifolds with boundary, uh, with common boundary uh, a torus, any manifold <laughs> gotten by, well, by gluing these two manifolds by an orientation reversing homeomorphism or diffeomorphism of their boundary um, is called a splice. Okay, so an example of a splice is just Dane's surgery. So one of the manifolds is the complement of the unknot in the three sphere or the solid torus and the other is, is, your, is your knot complement. So it might be, this terminology uh, sometimes means something a little bit stronger, but this is sufficient for our purposes. Okay, and so, and so here's an observation. It's, is that, uh, is that am I, uh, is a splice of the three sphere minus the two components of the link that you start with. So the, S, the trefoil knot and S3 minus this is the uh, what? Well, it's also goes by the name uh, the two four I minus one torus knot. Okay, and so, so how do I see this? Um, well, another way I can think about this manifold is I've taken the Hopf link and then next summed, so I've tied a little local knot in each of the components of the Hopf link. So this is the trefoil, I'll call it T23. And here is uh, the two, 4i minus 1 torus knot. And then I do plus 1 surface. Okay, but, but connected summing uh, is itself a type of splicing operation. So connect summing, like doing uh, the splice With, uh, with, a with a particular knot in the solid torus, so the complement of uh, this knot, or, you know, in this case the trefoil, the, the two, four, I minus torus knot in the solid torus. So what I mean by that then, so I can represent So if I remove a little neighborhood of the meridian of each of the, the hop link, and I glue, to, I glue in some way, which I won't make clear, the complement of the trefoil knot to this manifold with torus boundary here, and this other component of this manifold with two torus boundary components. So if I glue the complement of the two, four I minus one torus knot, this is now another way to think about that surgery manifold. Okay, but now I observe that these meridians to the components of the Hoff link, when you think about them in the surgery manifold, they're actually isotopic to the core of the, of the surgery. The knot that I think E was referring to is KPQ in his, in his talk. So these meridians, you know, if you think about the way that you identify, you know, when you, when you do day in surgery, this meridian becomes isotopic to the core of the plus one surgery torus.
Okay, so I've, now I've taken the meridians out, so that means I've taken out, I've basically taken out the solid toroid that I glued in to begin with. So what I've done is I've taken the complement of the trefoil knot, the complement of the two four I minus one torus knot, and I've glued them to the complement of the hop link somehow. Okay, the complement of the hop link is just a torus cross interval. S3 minus the hop link is homeomorphic to T2 cross interval. So what I've done is I've taken the complement of the trefoil, the complement of the two four I minus one torus, and I've disregarded all the identifications, but I've somehow glued them to each other um, via this T2 cross interval. Okay. Okay, and so once I have that in hand, then there's just sort of two relatively easy uh, propositions that <clears throat> a splice of non trivial. not complements is irreducible and um, the weight of pi 1 of a splice of not complements And both of these are not, com I mean by not complements in S3, it's one. Um, so, so, the, so the idea here is that, <clears throat> you know, what does it mean to be reducible? It means that every two sphere bounds uh, a bounds three ball. So suppose I had a two sphere in this splice that didn't bound such a three ball. Well, you look at that two sphere and you intersect it with the torus that separates the splice into the two pieces. Okay, and then you use a kind of classical three-manifold argument called the sort of innermost disk argument that looks for um, an innermost, uh, you know, sort of an innermost circle of intersections of that two-sphere with the torus and uses that and basically removes it by an isotopy using the fact that these non-trivial not complements um, uh, are irreducible themselves and uh, that, you know, non-trivial means that um, no homologically or homologically essential curve on that boundary torus of the not complement uh, bounds a disk. Okay. So we use that to isotop the two sphere away from the, uh, away from the, uh, the, the separating torus and then we use the irreducibility of the not complements um, in the three sphere which is a classical uh, theorem of Alexander. And then, then weight is, uh, is somehow even easier. This is just using Van Kampen's theorem and you know, the, the fact that uh, the weight of the fundamental group of a not complement is one, and so now I'm gluing two such weight one manifolds to each other, and they form a push-out diagram in these groups, and just um, show that the, the weight is one there. Okay, so, so now we've done the sort of easy parts of this uh, theorem, where you have to turn to uh, the more difficult part. Uh, which is somehow obstructing it from being surgery on a knot. And this is where Hagar Fuhr homology enters the picture. Okay, so what we're going to use here is uh, we're going to use the structure theory. Structure theorem for the Hagar Fleur minus groups of a, of a manifold, uh, which is a homology S1 cross S2. So this is Dudo's Vat and Sabo. Says that if Y3 um, has H1 isomorphic to Z. So I'm not sure what the summer school has done so far, but um, maybe you've defined Hagar blur groups. Is that so? And uh, and they split along spin C structures. I'll, I'll go with you know, the sort of 
conventions that have been established throughout the morning and afternoon. Uh, then the, the Hagard Fleur homology minus groups uh, in a particular, so this is the unique spin C structure. With whose first turn class uh, is equal to zero in uh, H two of Y. So in that particular spin C structure, um, these Fleur groups, uh, as a as a F of U module, split. So they have rank two as an F of U module. So you have these two free summands. They're supported in some. Uh, some grading, half an integer grading, and then there's also a torsion F of U module, which I'm going to just disregard here. But the point is that you have these two free sum ends, and they each, uh, the element one in F of U, which is the highest graded element in these, in these free uh, sum ends, you know, it ha the, the element one has some grading. I'll call that D plus and D minus. And so utility of these, <coughs> these, these numerical invariants that you derive from the free summands in Fleur homology is that they serve to give you information about the types of four manifolds that that three manifold can bound. So let me just uh, uh, make a definition. So, so given uh, a smooth four manifold and say with boundary possibly not empty, uh, well, I'll, I'll really be considering the case of boundary not empty. Um, we can consider its intersection form so on its second homology to the integers, <clears throat> and we can think about it as if those second homology classes are represented by surfaces, I, I, I take a pair of surfaces and I send them to the algebraic intersection number. Now, if this is a closed four manifold, we know that this is a non-degenerate pairing by Poincaré duality. But if the case, in the case that the four manifold has non-empty boundary, um, it, it might not be non-degenerate. Um, and so I can consider, let's let V equal the, you know, equal the kernel of this of this pairing on. You know, the, the associated quadratic pairing on the second homology. This is, so these are the classes um, in the second homology of X that if I represented by, them, by surfaces, I could push them off of, off of themselves. Um, okay, and so one, I haven't defined anything, uh, but I said I was going to, and so I've got to define something. Uh, I'll say X is negative semi-definite if qx of alpha alpha. So if I look at the self-pairing of any second homology class with itself, and that's less than or equal to 0. OK, and so a theorem of Osvald and Sabo from the early days of this, uh, of this theory is that if x is negative semi-definite, with boundary x equals y, this is an a integral homology s1 cross s2 the type of manifold we're considering in the structure theorem. And T is a spin C structure on this four manifold. Then I have two inequalities. Uh, well, I have one inequality that, that, that's, that's satisfied. So C1, but which can take two different forms depending on the nature of X. So the self, or the, <coughs> Turn class squared of this spin C structure plus the rank of H2 of X mod 
the subgroup on which the intersection form vanishes is less than or equal to 4 d plus of the boundary y <clears throat> plus 2. This holds if the restriction map from the first cohomology of that 4-manifold to the first homology of the 3-manifold is 0. And if that restriction map is non-zero, you have a slightly different looking inequality. C1 squared T plus rank of H2 on D is less than or equal to 4 D minus minus 2. H1 of X to H1 of Y is non-zero. Okay. Oh, I, yeah, I mean to say X. I don't know what W is. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so, so out of these two inequalities, uh, you can come up with the, some obstruction. So, uh, obstruction 2 isn't going to really be relevant to us here, but um, I just want to say this yields a slice obstruction. So if you have a knot that bounds a smoothly embedded disk in the four ball, uh, when I do zero surgery on it, if zero surgery is the boundary of a of a homology S1 cross B3, which it would be if you, if K bounds a smoothly embedded disk, I could cap that disk with the two handle of the zero surgery cobordism to get a sphere on which I would do surgery to turn it into uh, a homology S1 cross B3. <clears throat> uh, and such a manifold has non-trivial restriction map, so we would apply the second inequality, and all of these numbers over here would be zero, and I'd get D minus of this manifold has to be equal to, has to be greater than or equal to uh, one half. More relevant for us though is this is the zero, the, the first inequality is going to yield our zero surgery obstruction. So um, if my manifold Y is zero surgery on a knot, well zero surgery on a knot naturally is the boundary of an integral homology S2 cross D2. This is the uh, two handle cobordism associated to that surgery. And so then inequality one, I guess I shouldn't push, it. yeah, I'll push it. So the, this has integral homology S of S2 cross D2, so the restriction map to the boundary is, is zero, and I get um, D plus of Y has to be greater than or equal to minus a half. So now you, you know the name of the game. Now we have to uh, produce some manifolds that have this d plus invariant, I guess, less than negative a half. Um, well, and that's what we did. Uh, and I just erased them, the, the manifolds mi in question. Um, so, 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 so this, is, this is an obstruction I should say. This is, uh, I did say. This is Josh Vaden Sabo, and you know it's it's been there for 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 some years. Um, but the issue is that you know in Hagar Fuller homology, you know, we have access to quite a bit of computation. Robert alluded to algorithms even for you know pretty robust algorithms for I mean for computing the the Hagar Fuller homology in a hat version of any closed three manifold. So I could just plug this into into a computer program. But for the minus version, it's it's quite a bit more subtle, and so you have to somehow access. Um, some computational ability, and one of the key things that we have in Hagar Fleur homology to compute are surgery formula. So we have these knot invariants for knots and manifolds, and if you know the knot invariants, then you know there are surgery formula that tell you how to uh, uh, calculate the Fleur homology of three manifolds and by surgery on those knots in terms of the knot invariants. Um, but but the issue here is that you know quite a bit more is known if 
if the, if the knots that you're doing surgery on are in the three sphere, and that's exactly the situation we're trying to, to be, you know, to sort of be in the complement of in, the, in this program. So, so how to compute. Of, of, uh, of D plus of MI. Uh, and so, so this is the, the, where the work comes in. Um, and so we, kinda, we, we do this in two steps, and the steps are You know, instead of viewing it as surgery on a two-component link all at once, we, we view it as surgery on a, on a one-component link and, or, a, or a knot. So I do plus one surgery on this trefoil component. And, uh, and I try to keep track of the... So, so given uh, CFK, so these are... CFK is the sort of in, in most robust knot invariant that we have in, in Higgard floor homology. It's the sort of complete... Um, sort of not invariant of, of the trefoil, there's a surgery formula which I just uh, alluded to that tells me the, uh, a, a model for the homotopy type of um, any version of Fleur homology, but in particular CF minus, of a plus one surgery on the trefoil. Okay, so, but this is only going to allow me to compute the uh, the floor homology, the manifold that I get by doing surgery on one component. And then um, what we need then is to understand what's the floor homology of, or the knot invariant, the knot floor homology of, of this knot that I get inside one surgery on the, on the trefoil. So we do this in two steps. We So I do this plus one surgery on the trefoil, and then I, there's a formula for how, what the floor homology of the, the meridian of that trefoil is, or and equivalently, the, the core of the surgery curve that I, that I or the, the core of the surgery salad torus that I use when I did surgery on the trefoil. So this is a formula um, due to myself and Adam Levine. Um, so, so we can then compute the, the sort of total and Floor homology invariant of this of this of this not mu, and I want to connect some mu with the two four i minus one torus knot, and that just has the effect of answering this complex, which I said I could compute with the floor homology of the two four i minus one torus knot in the three sphere. And this is something which is, pretty, is, is fairly well understood. And once I had that, then I know the floor homology of the knot inside the Planck, this plus one surgery in the trefoil, which is the Poincaré homology sphere, and, I can just, uh, and then I can compute the floor homology of surgery on that um, using the surgery formula again. Uh, and that, that's, the, that's the way this, uh, this computation goes. Um, so you know, the, this approach, one thing, you know, that shows that this is not surgery or not, but these invariants D plus and D minus are sort of from the... You know, it's not too hard to show that they're homology cobordism invariants. That shows that these aren't homology cobordant to search in a knot. And then there's you know, sort of another side of this talk that I'm not going to get into about you know, sort of uh, calculations of those invariants for all ciphered fiber manifolds, uh, all ciphered fiber homology S1 cross S2s. And in fact, those obstructions D plus and D minus are insensitive to, uh, they don't tell you anything about ciphered fiber spaces. And so in particular, these manifolds, since they our invariants D plus do tell you something about them, and we know that these can't be homology converted to a cipher manifold. Okay, so my remaining two minutes, I just want to mention a couple questions that I think are interesting. Sure. Somewhat related. So, so the, uh, the first is that, um, you know, if you go back to the homology S3 case uh, and you look at this relation, this equivalence relation of homology cobordism, you can actually turn three manifolds into a group, the three-dimensional homology cobordism group. And there's been a lot of really beautiful uh, recent work understanding this group, but um, 
you know, we as humans, I think, understand the homology cobordism group, three-dimensional homology cobordism group, very poorly. So, so here are some basic questions about that. So I'll denote that group by uh, theta three, theta z three. Um, is, is this three-dimensional homology cobordism group, um, so is any uh, class in that group represented by surgery on, um, on a knot in a three-sphere. So this is sort of the analog of the question we've answered in the, in the homology S1 cross S2 case, but there's not a sort of natural group structure there like there is in the homology three-sphere case. Um, another question about this group is, um, so, so this result of, that I mentioned, Estrophagen and, 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 and Foyt have said that the homology cobordism group, not every up class is represented by a, the class of a Seifert manifold. But you can ask, is um, you know, a state of three generated as a group by Seifert fibered spaces? Another question is, is it, you could ask, is it generated by, by, by surgeries on knots? I mean, there's all sorts of, I mean, this is a, as I mentioned, a very poorly understood group, so I could ask all sorts of things, like, does it have any torsion? Um, I, I, you know, we know it's infinitely generated, and we sort of know s subgroups that are sort of, or subsets that are linearly independent, but we, we don't know a whole lot about it. Uh, and a, another question that I, that I want to just, yeah, I just want to, I've already said it, but I just want to really emphasize. I, I really like this question. I think it's, the answer's got to be no. I mean, there, these, I, I think, uh, so, so for instance, I'd bet that pi one of sigma a one a n a i AJ, rel so if I look at a collection of relatively prime integers, I can get a, I can get a homology three sphere, the Brie scorn sphere, sigma A1 up to AN, or this, and it's a ciphered fibered manifold. It's a homology sphere, um, and, and so I, I would bet that once, so if N is greater than uh, three, um, Sigma isn't surgery or not. So if you have more than more than three singular fibers, it isn't surgery or not. And I would bet that once n gets big enough, you could show that the weight of that fundamental group gets arbitrarily high. And the, the motivation is that the SU2 representation variety, the fundamental group of these manifolds, gets very, very high in dimension. That implies that the SL2C representation variety also grows in dimension. And so the question of whether or not this is weight one is whether I can kill that. And this, once you look at SL2C, this algebraic variety by sort of intersecting, you know, you know whether I intersect with a generic hypersurface, is there going to be any points? And, you know, you typically expect that, that there would be points because of uh, dimension counting. But, but since these are affine varieties in the SL2C case, that doesn't, that's not an argument. But I just suspect that, you know, these, these manifolds um, uh, sort of provide a negative answer to, or their fundamental group, groups provide a negative answer to Weigold's question. And then as a, as, a, as a final thing that if you could just implement what I just said somehow, uh, would be um, uh, this, that's bad grammar. Um, is there, uh, so I'll just state it. So yeah, we don't know of any, a single homology sphere where you need more than two components or a single homology S1 cross S2 where you need more than two components. And that's just kind of, you know, sort of, underscores the fact of how little we know even about the surgery problem. Um, but again, if you could sort of make sense of this approach to the, the answer to the Weigold question, you'd, I would suspect that these ciphered fiber spaces also are, you know, take arbitrarily many components to, to, to obtain by surgery. So I'll stop there. Uh-huh. 
It works for any surgery coefficient on the, uh, so you, you take a knot in a three manifold and there's a, um, it's like a filtration of a, um, of a surgery formula for the, uh, for the fluorohomology manifold to take my surgery on that knot. So you sort of filter that mapping cone complex and it's a formula that works for any surgery coefficient. Uh, the core of the surgery solid torus. So once you start dealing with uh, rational numbers instead of integral, in, you know, integral slopes, then uh, I think if you, uh, if you look at the meridian, then maybe that ends up being a cable and not the, the core. <laughs>